Hello everybody, today we will be reviewing the second unit of Dr. Meyer's AP Psychology textbook, provided by yours truly. This unit teaches about the possible biases and characteristics of a researcher and about statistics. Let's move on to the first two modules, which describe the behaviors and possible faults of a researcher. The first bias to be aware of is the hindsight bias. You've probably heard this one all the time, where someone would say, quote, I knew that was going to happen all along, unquote, when they actually had no idea of the result of something. One bias that is similar to this is the overconfidence bias, where we think we know more about a subject than we actually do. One of the strongest traits that a man possesses is the ability to recognize patterns quickly and efficiently. However, this makes us more prone to seeing patterns in random events. In order to become a good researcher, you need to have some characteristics that will make you naturally capable of being a scientist. For example, it's important to be curious so that you can think inside the box or outside the box. Skepticism helps with the researcher's credibility, so you don't believe in every single thing that you hear without factual evidence backing it up. It's also important to be humble, so that when you get you don't get overconfident and make outlandish claims. You guys probably all know about the scientific net method, so I won't really go deep into that. However, there are still a couple of terms that could easily be mixed up. For example, hypothesis is a testable prediction, not a question. Operational definitions means to explain your experiment. Replication means that other scientists can do the same experiment that you did and get the same result, and theory explains why something happened. In psychology, there are three main types of research. There is case study, naturalistic observation, and surveys. Case studies is when researchers study a group in depth. With case studies, it's easy to control and you have rich descriptions of subjects. However, there are things such as observer bias that can hurt the credibility of the experiment. Naturalistic observation is where the researcher observes without manipulating the subjects. You are able to avoid art artificial lab situations, but you also have less control. And finally, surveys is where the subjects self-report their experience. Th it makes administration a lot easier, but you would have to make you would have a lot more bias from the subjects themselves. On to Module 6, which, is, which delves into the statistics part of psychology. Essentially, cor correlation is how the dependent variable and independent variable change together. Something that tags along the idea of correlation is the correlation co coefficient, or the number that shows how much a variable change or relates numerically. Remember that the positive or negative numbers or signs don't really matter when factoring in how much something correlates. One way that data is displayed is through a scatter plot or through a graph cluster of dots. When you are reading these graphs for further analysis, be wary of illusory correlation, or when you think you see a correlation when you see none at all. During a study, researchers use a procedure called the double blind procedure. Or this is where neither the subjects or the staff knows who, who took the placebo drug or the real drug. By the way, placebo means to give no real effect. In order to provide any valuable quantitative data from your research, it is important to label your independent and dependent variables. Remember that the independent variable is the part being changed and the dependent variable is the consequent consequence of that thing being ch uh, changed. One thing you have to worry about is that when you're taking in data is that there can be confounding variables or something that could impact the dependent variable besides the independent variable in your experiment. There are a couple methods one could use in their research. We'll just focus on the three main ones. Descriptive or how you describe behavior, correlational or where you look for naturally occur occurring relationships, and experimental where you explore cause and effect. On to the two final modules, which do, um, also explores the basics of uh, statistics. Descriptive statistics is quite simply where you label and or describe certain characteristics. 
Almost all psychologists, statisticians, and even scientists, for that matter, use this form of statistics. You've probably seen histograms before. They are the graphs that have the little bars sticking out. They're often used to show the distribution of data in the graph. Mean, median, and mode. Remember those three. They're, quite, they're used quite a bit on the test. Mean is average. Mean is the middle of the um, mean, median is the middle of the distribution, and the mode is the most frequent individual data. Of course, you need to take in, in the range or the x limit of the that the data fills in into consideration when finding things like mean, median, and mode. Standard devia deviation is often how much a score varies. A perfect experiment will almost always output a normal bell shaped curve. One thing to remember is that when dealing with test subjects is that when you need that you need their informed consent and you must debrief them on what they will be doing and or what will be happening to them. All right guys, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Any tips, questions or comments can be posted down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This will help this channel a lot to grow.